Welcome back to Keep On Growing. I'm Mike Van Duzzi, and I've got something really exciting to show you. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I love growing in downspouts. Now, one of the reasons is because I can grow a whole lot of food like this. As you can see, I've got about two, four, six, eight. I've got about 14 two-foot sections here, and I've got an eight-foot section up here. We've got all kind of lettuce, pak choy, kale, watercress, all kinds of stuff growing back here. And pretty much I put those up there about a week and a half ago and just left them. And believe it or not, they'll go about another month without me doing anything. So it's a carefree way of growing your food, and it's just wonderful walking out your back door and having greens whenever you need it. Now, the reason why we started using downspouts is I started looking at hydroponics and we started using round sewer pipes for those who roll around. We had to figure out some way to stop them from rolling. And my wife saw these, they're actually your downspout that goes down the side of your house. And she said, that looks like it fits on your rail. We had a deck and we had uh, two by sixes as a handrail. Now, just about anywhere you can put a two by four or two by six or anything, but at least a two by four, you can go ahead and set some of these downspouts up there and you can grow some of your own food. So we love using the system. Just about anyone, anyone anywhere can grow some of their own food. And uh, we've taught a lot of people how to make their own. If you want to learn how to make one of these, I have a playlist. I'll go ahead and link the description and you can go ahead and check out the playlist. There's step one, two, and three, and it's really simple. Now the first two steps were basically just cutting things to length and drilling the holes and spacing them out just right. The third one was kind of a bit of a problem. As you can see, the end of these are bent. We had to learn how to, we had to figure out how to keep water inside of here. The round sewer pipes had end caps. These don't have end caps because they go down the side of your house and the water is supposed to come down and divert the water away from your house. So you wouldn't want to plug that up, right? What we did was I took a heat gun, just like that. And it's just an old one. I've had it for years. And we would heat the ends of it. And when you heat PVC, it gets real malleable. And I would just bend it in like that, fold it like a little envelope. And that stopped the water from coming out. So now these things, as you can see right here, these are all bent on the ends. And it works wonderful. But some of you out there, even though you could cut things to length, and even though you could drill some holes, you either didn't want to go and buy a tool just to heat and bend the ends. I mean, this is meant to strip paint. You know, if, if you're not out there stripping paint, you really wouldn't use it for much else. It gets really hot. It goes up to 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you use one of these, you have to be careful. Uh, it peels paint off the side of the house. It'll peel your skin right off your fingers if, if you, you're not careful. So wear heat resistant gloves. So you do have to be a little careful with that. Another thing is um, heating up the plastic lets off toxic fumes. So you always want to do this outdoors. You never want to do it indoors. And it does get warm. Like I said, it goes up to 1100 degrees. Once you warm up the PVC enough so that you can bend it, you're going to need your gloves to kind of bend that too, that you can burn your fingers on here too. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. And I've bent like I think over 2,000 of these last year. There's a bunch of you out there. Um, I sell these in my Etsy shop. The link's down in the description below. And uh, there's a bunch of you out there growing some of your own food in these. And there's people around the world are, you know, making their own too, making do with the, the products that they have. It's this wonderful thing. But that is the one thing that kind of held some people back. And, they, you know, they want to give it a try, but they're just not sure about getting a tool just for that or they're not, you know, the, it's a little intimidating using the heat gun and, and warming things up to that temperature. So, someone who's been watching our channel for a little over a year tried the same thing. She tried to bend the ends, you know, found it a little bit difficult, and she said there's gotta be an easier way. Now, I was looking into 3D printing, and I wanted to print some end caps, and that's why we watched Hucho's channel, and Hucho prints the end caps, and if you go over to his channel, he actually has a 3D um, uh, program so that you can print your own end caps. And I was going to do that. But when I started looking into it, there's a little bit of a learning curve in 3D printing. And it takes a long while to actually print one of these. You know, we see them on science fiction where it's just like, you know, them printing something up. But in all actuality, this little pen goes around and around and around and 
that builds up layers and it takes hours to, to print something like that. Now Karen also was into the 3D printing and that, but she thought there'd be a better way. And she actually found quarter inch PVC, which is the same stuff that this is made out of. And she took a CNC machine, which is basically a, a mounted router and routed out a groove that fits perfect onto the downspouts. So I'll bring you in for a close up here. So now you can take these and just about anybody can cut things to length, right? And just about anybody can drill some holes. If you don't want to use a hole saw, just get a spade bit. They're only a couple bucks. You can make a one inch hole instead of a two inch hole. I use a two inch hole just in case you want to use a two inch neck cup. They fit perfect in there. But uh, if you just want to use a spade bit, you can do that. So just about anybody can do that. The intimidating part was actually doing the heating and bending on the end. But now she's made these and it takes a system to another level because you can take them and just put them on the end and you've got, all you have to do is just kind of squeeze it, pops on. She puts hers on with uh, PVC glue, which makes a permanent bond so that won't never come off. I'm giving mine a try with a little silicon. And we'll bring you in and I'll show you how I do that. But I'm gonna try and use it with silicon and put them on. I've got one right here that I've done up. And you can see that fits on there really nicely. I'm thinking that this works. I've already tested it. I put water in here, left it for about four or five days, not a bit dripped out. So that's gonna work. And I'm thinking at the end of the year, the other drawback with this is that it was tough to get in here and clean right? You can't get in from the ends. You got to get a little bottle brush to try to clean in there. It was really difficult. I'm thinking at the end of the year that I can, with silicon, I can pull this back off. I've done that with my NFT system with the big sewer pipes. Instead of gluing them together, I put a little silicon on it. And at the end of the year, I pull them apart, clean them, and then clean out the silicon, put some new on. You know, once you pull the end caps off, you can get back inside, right? And you can clean inside of there. So, that's perfect. So I'm thinking that is the game changer. That's going to change everything for our downspouts. This means it's easier for everyone, you know, that's been wanting to do this, but they've been held back because they're just a little intimidated about that. Just about anyone can cut something to length or have somebody cut something to length. You can ask a carpenter to cut this to length for you and drill some holes. It's a little difficult to ask a carpenter to explain to him what I was talking about, you know, heating that up and bending it just right. But if you can't do that yourself, you can always get someone to cut that for you and you can order these. And the good thing about this is that Karen started a nonprofit group and it helps out kids to learn a trade. They're actually learning how to run these machines, how to make these. And uh, the profits from that is going towards the, the um, helping kids learn a trade. So cool. these are, <clears throat> this is at the Cedar Valley Makerspace where I do most of my construction. And this is actually my son. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's learning how to use the CNC and they are all about collaborative learning. So it's a great place for us to do this. We will be doing the same thing with both youth and refugee population. Uh, the refugees in general just need a place to learn a safe space to, to practice, you know, talking and doing things, showing up on time, really simple stuff. And so, we plan on all the caps that we're manufacturing do require some finish work. And so we plan on using that as a workforce project for them, which I think will be just really fun because hopefully some of them will get to take some gardens home at some point. Right. And yeah, I know they'll really enjoy that. I know that they have a hard time with our seasons because <laughs> Thailand is like zone nine and we're like zone four. So. <laughs> So here's just another group that came through. We have a group that does um, workforce out of the local college as well. So we just have a whole culture of learning that's happening at the makerspace. And on the right, I have just some girls planting a garden. We got to trial it with the schools, the Waterloo schools. Mm -hmm. And we I'm partnered with the health department. And so we're planning on putting a nutrition curriculum 
a culture curriculum and a science curriculum along with the garden. So we'll be writing those this year. They would be open source. We would be giving them to teachers. We're going to open source the plans for the garden so that the construction people in the classes can build them themselves. Um, I have templates that you can cut on a laser or that you can print out. So I feel like it's going to be as user friendly as possible. And of course, we'll have support through the nonprofit that people can call and ask us questions. Right. So, yeah. Wow. That's cool. That's a lot of stuff that's just near and dear you know, to my heart. It's just like I said, one, one thing is just getting everybody to grow, you know, some of their own food, take care of themselves. And and then you're working with people in need mm -hmm. and you're also working with kids and getting set up with school. So, uh, I mean, lot, lots of great stuff there. Yes. And of course, then lastly, is just to thank you from our family. <laughs> and of course, I'm always chasing them with lettuce or kale somewhere in the house. Like, it's your greens. <laughs> that's pretty much what moms do, I think. Yeah. That whole eat your veggie thing. That's no joke. <laughs>it down in the description you can go check it out if you want to help out you can purchase some of these end caps you're going to help yourself because you're going to be learning how to grow some of your own food and you're also going to be helping some other kids out and to learn a trade so awesome it's a win-win situation those are down there in the description and if you don't have time some people you know we're just too busy right you, you don't have time to to go shopping for this and cut it and, and do that and some people just don't like getting their hands dirty if you want i've got these for sale we sold about 2,000 over 2,000 close to 2,500 of these last year um, these are for sale there's a two pack ten dollars off right now off the two pack if you go check it out links down in the description and you can buy some of these you can buy a couple and just go ahead and test them out i know winter time's coming up and a lot of you aren't thinking about growing right now but you don't want to wait till spring to to figure everything out right go ahead and get these now you can try a couple of these in your house under some lights and learn the basics of growing some microgreens turning them into baby greens and growing a bunch of like our lettuce that we have outdoors right now um, kale spinach pak choy all kinds of leafy greens and learn how to do that over the winter do it inside and, and just have fun with it don't get stressed out and then when spring comes you can take these outdoors and you can grow a lot of food um, so get a couple to practice with or get a bunch and have your virtual salad bar outside we're going to show you how easy this is so step one and step two is cutting these to length and drilling some holes in it there's a playlist step one and step two will show you how to do just that step three was actually how to bend the ends and we're not going to do that so go ahead and watch step one and step two to get to this point and then we'll come in for a close-up and i'm going to show you exactly how to put these on all right so let me show you how to do this first of all here's your two end caps these are for the three by four you can see a little groove in it right All you're going to need are the two end caps, your downspout, like I said, got it cut to length, got some holes drilled in it. Now your kit that you've got is going to come with these. And the reason why I didn't glue it on for you is that I want you to see how to do that yourself so that you'll be able to pull it back off at the end of the season and get in there and clean it out, clean this out, put some more silicone and put it back on. So this first step that you're learning is going to be something that you'll be doing every season you'll be taking that off and cleaning it out now this is just the way that i do it everybody has their own little way let's see if i can get the silicone flow in here so all you have to do is get you some silicone you don't need this much you can get a small tube it doesn't take very much for these it depends on how many you're doing if you ordered 10 or 20 of these you're going to want to get you know a caulk gun but if you just ordered one or two sets, you can probably get the little small tube of, of silicon in the store and that'll work just fine. I like to use silicon because it's a little more water resistant than caulk and mold resistant. So usually when you get caulking, put it over here, you get a lot of mold in that growing. And if you get silicon, if you do get any, you can wash it off really easy. But all you wanna do is get your silicon and 
watch the groove right there and I'm just gonna put this on here squeeze it and just move around the groove let it flow in there you don't have to worry about getting it exactly even you just want to get a good bead of silicon inside of there just keep squeezing and if you get a little too much don't worry we're gonna wipe it off it's better to have a little too much than a little than not enough okay so all the way around stop your glue gun glue gun your silicon and I want you to see that right there see how it's all filled up completely filled up that groove right now let me set this down for you so pretty much that's what I'm doing you want to go ahead and get the bottom in there first right make sure the sides are going on the top just make sure it gets seated all the way around and then see the excess silicon you want to just get your finger and smear it down in that groove come all the way around and smear it down in that groove just like that and then if it misses a little spot just take what you got left so what you want to do is just go all the way around there and make sure that groove at least both sides and the bottom the top it's not that important because you're not going to have water filled all the way up to there so if you just want to do both sides and the bottom that's fine but i like to use clear silicon because you can see you know you can kind of tell where it's at but it's see-through so you don't have to worry about making a big mess so let's do the other side we'll get one more side here so y'all can see how to do it Keep your little rag, wipe your fingers off. But it's that easy, folks. That's why I wanted to go ahead and let you guys do this yourself so that you can practice doing it. And when it comes time to clean these, you'll know how to do it. All right. Once again, just fill it up. Now before I put this one on, I want to take this so that it doesn't move on me. Because you know sometimes when you get something set in place then you start monkeying around with the other edge. All I'm going to do is put a piece of tape on here. I'm just going to stick it in that hole there, come around and tape it like that. That way it's not going to go anywhere when we start doing this one. All right, same thing. Silicon, put it on the bottom edge. Make sure you get that bottom edge in there. Sides are going on. Squeeze a little if you need. And you'll feel it sit all the way down in there. Now go around, clean up your edge. Like we did before. And if you got a little bit thin in some areas, don't be afraid to come back in here. Put you just a little bit more in. Just so you know you got a nice tight seal on there. So like I said, both sides and the bottom, you know, don't worry too much about the top. And that's it. I would just take this one. Put your little tape on there too. Make sure that doesn't go anywhere, and you're all set. Now just take that, I would leave them setting up like this, and let that set overnight. The next day you can come out, they'll be ready to go, be just like that, nice edges. Set it down, nutrient solution, start putting your plants in, you're set. Mix you up some nutrients that's just gonna hold about a gallon of water, and you'll be set. Now check out the other videos. You can either go get transplants from the local nursery or Home Depot, Lowe's, what have you. And you can rinse them off, pop them in there, or you can grow yourself some microgreens like we always do. Pull out the microgreens, set them in the pool noodles. I've got different videos on this channel, check them out. And before you know it, you'll be growing all kinds of 
healthy leafy greens. Alrighty, you guys, like I said, I'm excited about that. There's people all around the world are growing some of their own food. There's tons of people that are growing with this system. It's helping a lot of people. And that all comes down to you guys. You, you've been sharing it. If you can't afford to help out the nonprofit or you know uh, support this channel, the, the best thing you can do is just share it with other people. And that way we spread. It's just like the little ripple when you drop something in the water and it spreads out. You guys sharing it is taking this and spreading it out. I get messages from people all around the world and, and I love you for that. So thank you. Like I was saying, you guys are the, it's going all around the world and it's all because of you guys. So I love you for that. You guys keep doing what you're doing. And as always, lift, inspire, keep on growing and be the change. We'll catch you next time.